ancient city of Rome wakes up in the morning to church bells as birds fly over the dome of the Pantheon or quench their thirst by the Trevi Fountain. From ancient imperial capital to Renaissance hub, the human population of the Eternal City has lived with its greatness for generations. Today, its three million people are pursuing new modern destinies among their ancient glories. I'm Francesca Maninti, I'm 31 years old. I'm originally from Milan in the north of Italy, but now I live in Rome. Six years ago, Francesca went to Rome, where she studied economic security and geopolitics for a master's degree. On graduation, she joined the Italian Institute for International Studies, working as a senior researcher. Roma has always been my dream city. I moved here uh, six years ago. And now I walk to the office every morning at nine because uh, we have our morning briefing with colleagues that is just like a brainstorming for analysis. So then we start work. The Italian Institute for International Studies was founded in 2004. Buongiorno. Buongiorno. This independent think tank provides data and strategic decision analysis for clients around the world. It also cooperates with its partners to hold seminars. Recently, Francesca and her colleagues have been preparing to launch a new research program based on the Belt and Road Initiative. La conferenza di lancio di Shang. Io ho preparato una copia del concept paper. Uh, allora, per la location io sono incline a fare qualcosa di un po' più leggero. Ok, abbiamo un mese per preparare il lancio di Shang. Mm. Uh, this is the biggest project to fall into Francesca's hands since she joined the Institute. The name of the program is the Chinese character Xiang, meaning towards. The program focuses on exploring the potential of the Belt and Road Initiative for Italy. When Francesca joined the Institute six years ago, her research interests were Asia-Pacific affairs. However, her work was never taken as seriously as today. Up to now, she still remembers the first report she published on China. It was about the um, realpolitik, the so-called realpolitik between China and India. My point was that they had so many differences, but then there are some strategic interests that urge them to find in some way uh, convergences. To her disappointment, after the report was published, it received little attention from Italian society. At that time, Italy was deeply embroiled in a financial crisis. People had no time to look further afield. Um, you know, the 2013 maybe is the most difficult year for Italy uh, after during the economic crisis. It was a different period. Uh, Asia was perceived as far away. There were maybe not a lot of interest involved in, uh, on that topic. So it was, you know, not really a success. Three months after the publication of her report, China proposed the Belt and Road Initiative. The world looked to China again and Francesca found a new topic of interest, the BRI. Uh, unfortunately, at that time, uh, we were not so aware of what Belt and Road could be, so we skipped studying it during uh, months after month. Over the following four years, Francesca published 14 more research reports on China. She focused on the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China, 
on China's economic and foreign policies and the impacts of the BRI on Italy and Europe. I think that it's really like a, a game changer, something really new that gives a new framework for one very important thing that is connectivity. By 2017, the Italian economy had begun to recover. In February of that year, Sergio Mattarelli, the president of Italy, paid a state visit to China. The two countries agreed to bring their bilateral relationship to a higher level. Two years later, in March 2019, Chinese President Xi Jinping paid a state visit to Italy. The two sides signed a memorandum of understanding on the Belt and Road Initiative to deepen economic cooperation between China and Italy. Italy became the first G7 member to join the BRI. So it was the first time that we saw a window of opportunity to increase and improve our work on, specifically on China. At the same time, the Xiang program, launched by the Italian Institute for International Studies, entered its planning phase. After so many years, we were not aware about the possibility to look eastward. We would like to give to public opinion and stakeholders all the keys of interpretation for funding this uh, uh, new direction. The idea of using the Chinese character Xiang as the theme for the launch event comes from Francesca. She summarizes her understanding of the BRI with four key words. Innovative, comprehensive, worldwide, idealistic. 